Hello, as ever, on a Thursday, a very warm welcome to the programme. I've got a special uh, guest for you in the studio tonight. I just wanted you to imagine uh, for a minute or two that you're a goalkeeper. Now, that is very hard to imagine for most of us. Certainly for me, it's the position you dread uh, and you never want to go in goal. And if you do go in goal and you do a half-decent job, you're stuck with it and you never get out. But just supposing you're a goalkeeper and you have very little to do in a football match and what you do, you do very, very well. And then right at the very end, you get beaten by a shot that's well nigh unstoppable. Well, that this week befell my guest in the studio this evening, who's a big personality in every sense. He is the Sheffield United goalkeeper, Simon Moore. Good evening, Simon. Good evening, Al. Good of you to come back. Uh, Pleasure. Second visit to the studio. First time was in the company of Billy Sharp, uh, the, the Blades captain. Uh, what did you do to deserve that then on uh, on Tuesday? What did you do to deserve that? Yeah, I'm not sure to be honest. Um, obviously, it was uh, hugely disappointing. I thought thought we were excellent, um, like we have been sort of on a number of times this season, and uh, we've ended up not coming away with with quite what we deserved. No, I mean against Aston Villa. For anybody who doesn't know, you lost by one goal to nil. Sorry to remind you of that. In a game that largely you dominated, certainly in the the first half, and. Just put us, put us in your, your shoes then. I mean, it's 89, 90 minutes. Snodgrass gets it on the right-hand side, cuts in, and then what are you thinking? If you freeze-frame that moment, what are, you, what are you thinking? Well, you're thinking, obviously, with a player of his ability and his quality, then any sort of one of a number of things could happen. He could obviously... He's most likely to, to shoot because he's got that in the locker, and uh, or he could have slid it down the line. To, to the lad who was overlapping, or he could have played a through ball into someone else. But I think with Snodgrass, he's more likely to shoot, which he did. And that's what and you were expecting. That's what I'm expecting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then he's put one in the top corner. And yeah, for, from my point of view, obviously it's disappointing because again, it's a game where I haven't had an awful lot to do. The lads in front of me were, were excellent. Um, they were they were solid, and we created the better chances. Um, but I think with someone like Snodgrass, who's, who's got that sort of Premier League quality, international ability, um, there's always a chance that, that something like that can happen. And unfortunately, we were on the receiving end of that the other night. Um, but there'll, there'll be other games where we'll win in the last minute, and that's football, unfortunately. Yeah, I was, I was gutted after the game. A lot of the lads were, but equally, we could go and play Saturday. We could nick one in the last minute. and and be ecstatic, so it's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, the Villa fans behind your goal were ecstatic, weren't they? There were a lot of them, several thousand from Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. And I know that in a strange sort of way, if there was a consolation, it, it was from how much it meant, not just to the Villa team, but the supporters and everybody there. I know you, you couldn't join in it, but you could see it. No, nah, obviously it, it meant a lot to them, and I think that sort of shows just how far we've come as a football club mm -hmm. over the last, sort of, last year and a half that a team like Aston Villa have come to Bramall Lane and, and scored a last-minute goal, uh, and they've celebrated the way they have done. And I think, like I say, it sort of just shows how, how far that we've actually come. Sod's law for a goalkeeper, really, because unlike your opposite number, Sam Johnston, who had plenty to do, you just had a few crosses, and I, th I think that was about it, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's been like that quite quite a lot this season. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm probably my own worst critic. I look at every goal and and every sort of every sort of impact I have on the game, and. Since I've come back in the side, there's probably only one goal that I think that, that I should have probably done better with. Um, was that the long-range dipper that went th th over? That, yeah, that was the one against Hull City, yeah. yeah. And I, I hadn't played for probably probably for six months. Um, I hadn't played a league game for six months, so yeah. um, obviously I don't like to make excuses. But I think as a goalkeeper, it's difficult to, to come in after sort of such a long period out. But... Um, but yeah, I say I analyse every goal, I go through everything with, with my goalkeeper and coach Wardy and um, every, I hate, hate letting goals, goalkeepers hate, hate conceding, um, but I think you, you, you can't be too hard on yourself, uh, it's very much a sort of mentality as a goalkeeper, you need to be mentally strong uh, if you want to succeed uh, and, and be a good goalkeeper. That goal you referred to, I was at that game, uh, and it was Kamil Grzycki, as, as I remember it, for Hull. Yeah. 25 yards, and it kind of dipped uh, over, over the top of it. And I do remember calling it at the time, I've got to be honest, and saying, you know, the classic line, I think he might be a bit disappointed <laughs> that he didn't stop that one. You know, that, that kind of yeah, almost yeah. mealy mouth, but yeah. wondering how it got in. But when, and, and I wasn't alone in this, when I saw that on replay, as a few colleagues did, 
we thought, hey, we didn't quite give enough credit to that strike and the way he kind of got it up and up and up. I and think over that it took a slight deflection as well. I think right, it was off, off Cam, yeah. um, Cam's foot at the time. Uh, it's it's no excuse. I think uh, as a, as a goalkeeper, I, I should have done better with that one. But um, is it anything to do with starting position or? Uh, where yeah, do you the, this is it. I think <laughs> I say I was having a conversation with someone the other day, um, and again, it's like the goal the other night. <laughs> If you're stood, if I'm stood maybe a yard back or a yard to the left, a yard to the right, and he puts it in the bottom left-hand corner, I say to myself, oh, why did I stand Beating there? Beating at the near post. Beating yeah. at the near post. And then if I'm stood where I am and, like, he does what he does, it's, I think there's all, you always look, you always think at the time, and especially when the ball, as soon as it hits the back of the net, you're thinking, oh, what could I have done better? Well, look, I've got to tell you, in the, in, the, in the box, I was on the TV gantry, and I'm sure a TV commentator on Sky, and none of the, there was no utterance of, he might have done better with that, or he'll be disappointed with that whatsoever. I just yeah. thought, it's too, just too good. Yeah, and that, again, I think, uh, say, sometimes you do just have to hold your hands up and say, mm -hmm. with that bit of brilliance, that... That the other night it was a fantastic goal from the lad um, because it was it, it bends around you, didn't it, and then almost came back. Yeah. So you're not going to get it. It's just got. I say, it's just sometimes it is really the luck of the draw as a goalkeeper. It's the right place, right time. Mm -hmm. um, but I say I could have stood exactly where I was and been beaten down on the left hand side the other night, and I would have looked at it and gone, "Why did I stand there?" Mm. Um, but that's it. It's just the life of a goalkeeper. You're gonna you're gonna concede goals and. Equally, you're going to be the hero and save goals as well, and it's just sort yeah. of pass and pass, part and parcel of the, of the job, really. Yeah, it was a great strike from Robert Snodgrass, just wrapping his left foot around the ball and the way he just bent it. Anyway, we won't dwell on that, yeah. uh, but being the life of a goalkeeper, it, it, the importance is the temperament. You're sitting here smiling a couple of days later, so, so you've got to dust yourself down and get on with it pretty quickly. Yeah, it's, it's very much so. It's like during a game, if, if you make a mistake, it's, it's not the end of the world because there's still enough time for, for your team to get back in it and I say as a goalkeeper you like I just said you're going to be the hero you're going to be the villain you're going to get stick people are going to say you're good people are going to say you're, you're rubbish it's just a matter of opinion but I think you have to just just try and stay even try and stay on an even even keel and uh, I think the best goalkeepers do that I say you yeah. Have you a favourite game this season? I mean, instantly in my head is a picture of uh, a couple of saves, one in particular, made in the Sheffield Derby at Sir Bramall Lane. Yeah, for, for me personally, that was obviously um, pleasing to keep a clean sheet in, in my first Sheffield Derby. Uh, I think, again, it's another game that that we we could have we, we could have got more from. But, again, it's fair play to... Um, I say fair play to, to Sheffield Wednesday, really. Like, they, they were obviously struggling at the time injury wise and I think they were they were happy to come to Bramble Lane and get a point. Um but it, it was a decent game. I remember Joe Joe Wildsmith, their goalkeeper, made an excellent save from Clay. Um but I don't think he had an awful lot to do uh, that night. But um it was a great experience personally. Like it was one that sort of I was I was looking forward to and it was during that week I was it was in the back of my mind that because it's so big, yeah. it's such a big game and like uh, to the people of Sheffield, it means means so much to the fans. Like to the fans of Sheffield United, it's it's everything. You go into school, probably kids go into school talking about it. Parents probably go to school and, and have a bit of banter mm. with each other. Teach everyone. That's what everyone's talking about. And uh, now to to be part of that and, and to play in those sort of games, is 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 why you're a professional do, footballer. Do you, really. do you worry about it? Do you, do you almost say you, you've got to have positive. Uh, thoughts, but do you, do you ever allow the negative, are the negative ones there in terms of, oh, crikey, I don't want to be the villain of this, you know, I'll, I'll think, never live it down. Uh, yeah, I think you, you have to be, you have to be positive and you have to, I just, I prepared for it like it was, like it was just, just another game, but I'll be honest, yeah, it was in the back of my mind that this is, this is slightly bigger than, bigger mm. than normal and, uh, nah, of course, you, you want to be the hero, you don't want to be the villain, but, there's football, like I say, one week you are the hero, next week you are the villain, and it's just it's just the way it goes. And you just got to, as long as you work as hard as you can and and do your best. I think that's that's all you can ask for. Well, there were heroics of late on. Adam Reach shot from the edge of the area, and he scored quite a number of goals from 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 that range for Sheffield Wednesday. 
what was special was a split second earlier you were on you were on the ground you've been hammered in the uh, ribs i think yeah that was my <laughs> so own, that was my own fault to be it's, honest yeah, was it go on <laughs> talk us through that one so then. obviously i think yeah. um was it wallace whipped the ball in yeah. and uh Stacey's like headed it and i've come to it was a good ball in to be fair mm. and i've come punched it I uh, probably could have left into it, but made the decision to come. And I think that's another thing as a goalkeeper. If you make the decision to come, you've got to follow that through because anything can happen. So I've come battered into Steers. Uh, Steers just got up. He was absolutely <laughs> fine. But I, at the time, I thought, I broke my ribs here. And then sort of on the floor, and I've seen that he's lined up to volley it. And, yeah, so he thankfully got up and managed to tip it over. But I was just winded at the time, like I just literally well, took my breath away. It would have been a decent save if you'd have been standing. Yeah, no, I was. <laughs> alone down, down there. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. was pleased with that. And uh, that's always nice to, to make good saves and, and be able to contribute. And I say that's how it goes. One week you make you make a lot of saves and yeah. contribute. The next week things maybe don't go so well. But Indeed. I bet you're looking forward to seeing that one back following that game were you yeah no it yeah. was cool. I, at the time, watch, i'll be honest i didn't really think much of it at the time i was so yeah. sort of in the zone and in the moment and like i was for the whole game really it was that sort of tense and atmosphere and it was that sort of game where your concentration and as well when you're in the game you're so focused and you so you just sort of forget about everything that's around you but yeah, yeah. it was funny because i got home um back to my mum and dad's uh, and my brother was up as well and uh we, we were watching the game and my brother said, it was a pretty good save, that one. Oh, and he's, he's probably my harshest critic. He's very <laughs> hard to please. So being, he's a goalkeeper as well. So it was, uh, you know, it was quite nice for, to get a bit of praise off him. Yeah, he's just had a transfer from Barrow to Swindon, hasn't he? Or? Yeah, yeah, he's just yeah. gone to... Um, he, he, was a, he was at Reading for six years, uh, had a couple of loan moves, and um, he, he wasn't, wasn't playing at Reading. So he, he took the sort of chance to go away to get some, some football in the non-league and... Um, I say it, it was uh, it was tough up at Barrow, but he played played twenty odd games, done well, and uh, he's he's gone down to Swindon now, and he's got a good opportunity there to to take a place in the first team. So I'm, I'm really pleased for him. Excellent. It carries on a very exciting season. I mean, you're still very much in the hunt for a top six spot, despite everything. Um, and you, you've got this sequence of big games, you know, come bouncing from Aston Villa, Wolves away, the, the runaway leaders of the championship on Saturday. Yeah. No, then Leeds United. Yes, it's a great period, a great yeah. period for us and a, a very exciting one. And uh, uh, I say that this season, I, f I think we've been excellent. I think we have carried on from, from where we left off last year. Uh, and I think we've surprised a few people. Um, but <laughs> with us, it's, we just take it game by game. Um, it's important not to, to get too carried away, and it's, uh, it's it's been thoroughly enjoyable so far. Um, the games that we've been involved in, I say Villa the other night, Sheffield derbies, like the teams that were coming up again, Wolf Saturday, Leeds next next weekend. This, I say, it's sort of all the hard work that you put in last season and uh, and getting promoted. The, these are the games that, that you want to be involved in. And they're all on Sky. They're all on Sky all as well. Yeah, yeah, which is another thing. So. Uh, I think Leeds last season were probably on Sky nearly every week and it seems mm. to be us this season. It so. does, but that's a tribute because it, it, I, I think it's an indication as well. They know, the producers know what sort of games we expect from Sheffield United. You, you, the thing that strikes you is it doesn't matter what the opposition are, you're going to play your game and you're going to play it your way and you're going to be positive. Yeah. I presume that will apply as well at, on Saturday at Wolves. Yeah, I think, I think obviously you've seen in, in every game this season we've yeah. been very positive and we we've been very attacking and and we've played some played some f brilliant football and uh, I think that th th there's no reason to change anything. I think we just got to continue to do that, continue to, to take it game by game. And obviously we've brought in some some new players in the January transfer window, which uh, has made competition even even fiercer. And you, you see it in training day in day out. It's so intense and everyone works their socks off and. It's a it's a good environment. It's it's, it's a healthy a healthy competition. Mm. You got to take the rough with the smooth sometimes as well. If you're going going all out to win games, inevitably you're gonna you're gonna lose the odd one. Uh, people say, oh, you should settle for a point, but that settling for a point is not what has got you in the position you're in, is it? Yeah, and I think if you probably even out over the course of a season. Um, then, then you you win games, you win more games than you lose. I think, and yeah. and, and that's our style. And and I say, I think 
the, the, there's not much not much needed to be changed really. Okay, it's also a, a very settled dressing room in that um, the policy of the manager Chris Wilder has been not to wait for players to come knocking for new contracts. He's rewarded several: um, Mark Duffy, Leon Clark, John John Fleck, etc. And I saw speculation, I think a week or two back, that you were among the next or might be among the next batch. I don't know whether you've heard anything about that or or you know whether that's a likely progression. Yeah, obviously I say I haven't really heard, heard much about that myself to be honest, but um, I think them lads have, have been fantastic this season and, and thoroughly deserve the new deals. I think Duff's has been up there with sort of the highest assist in the league and Clark, he sort of speaks for himself. He, he, he's been excellent, flecky, fantastic. Like, all the lads have been very well and, and, and are very deserving of new deals. So, uh, and, and I think that's it. It's credit to credit to them boys for, for earning them. Well, it's something for you to focus on as well. You're on contracts anyway till the end of next season, I think. Yeah, you? and I'm, I'm very happy. I just want to continue playing football and, and learning and being yeah. being the best I can possibly be and things like that. Take care of himself. Take care of themselves if you do that. You're looking to stay long term at Sheffield United if you can. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm settled here. I really like it here. I. I I love working with Wardy, the goalkeeping coach, day in, day out. The lads are a fantastic bunch of lads. The team spirit that we have is is phenomenal and I love being part of that and, and coming into training day in, day out, working hard and uh, playing playing for Sheffield United. Yeah, You mentioned just now about some of the new players and you've obviously got Ryan Leonard who I thought showed well in the first half the other night and you've also got Lee Evans in that department as well. But one of the things that struck me about him was the dead ball delivery, the corners, you know, they were really, really threatening, weren't they? Yeah. You'd probably not wanted to be in goal facing those. <laughs> yeah, he, his delivery was excellent the other night, and yeah. I think the new lads are, are, have settled in really well. Uh, and like I say, I think it only sort of helps for, for competition, uh, and that's why another reason why I think we, we have been doing well is because people know that if they're not on their game, then, then there's people knocking on the door ready to, to come in and take the place. Sure. You had that little blip in your career because of the injury. Uh, it must concern any keeper, and then, the, then you know you're up against competition. Jamal Blackman, Jake Eastwood, etc. That must have been a difficult period for you. Yeah, that was. It was frustrating because obviously of all the highs of last season, coming into the championship season, getting your chance to, to face sort of higher opposition, and that I was really looking forward to it. And to get a sort of freak injury a week before the season was was really really frustrating, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I soon got made around it and realised that I say I just got to keep my head down, work hard, and and try and get myself back in the team. And say when Jamal came in at the start of the season, he he was excellent. I thought he'd done really well. He's a very good young keeper with sort of a big future ahead of him. And I was also really pleased as well for for Eastie. Um, I thought Eastie when he came in and played the cup games was, was excellent. And uh, he's had a very good season, sort of personally. Really, he's played in the cup games for us and. He's just recently gone out on loan to Chesterfield and, and done really well there, so um, I'm well pleased for him. But yeah, it was mm. tough, and I just had to, to say work hard, keep me head down, and, and wait for an opportunity to arise again. Yeah, an FA Cup run as well, a fifth round tie to uh, to look forward to uh, at uh, Leicester City. Um, that would be interesting, won't it? Um, Jamie yeah. Vardy. Yeah, uh, Jamie Vardy, Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire. Yeah. 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 No, it'd be um, it'd be good. I think. Uh, We've, we've done really well for the last couple of rounds. We've had a, an excellent away win at Ipswich, sort of ground out a really good 1-0 result and um, very much similar against Preston the other day. And uh, I think we can, we can go to Leicester and, and, and just express ourselves. And I say we go there, nothing to lose. And uh, if we play like we can do, then we'll have every chance of progressing into the next round, And which is, I say, something that obviously this football club's done very well with over the last sort of four or five years. I remember them having an excellent cup run not yeah. so long ago, so it'd be nice yeah. to, to emulate something like that. Yeah, it certainly would, and it's nice to see it regarded in the right way as well as something you want to win, not just in the later rounds, but from the yeah. from the earlier rounds. Yeah, very um, much so. Yeah, and uh, you came across John, and John Terry not only the other night, but also some years ago. We'll perhaps talk about that <laughs> in part two. That was uh, in the FA Cup with Brentford, uh, one of your former clubs some years ago. I got a bit of stick on Twitter for posting a picture of you in a Cardiff shirt, by the way, <laughs> this week. So I just thought it was a good action shot, but people noticed it and picked up on it. James Gregg will be here for part two with his roundup. And Simon, you'll stay on as well. So join us in five. See you then.